is uh, fewer summit meetings uh, because, uh, as you said, I've only been in office six months now and uh, there have been a lot of these. President Obama finishing up the G8 meetings in Italy today and apparently suffering from some summit overload. So what about his trip, the whole trip? Let's bring in the panel. Steve Hayes of the Weekly Standard, Mort Kondraki of Roll Call, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Uh, let's start with the G8 summit, which ended up, G8 summit, ended up, Steve, being attended by some 40 countries. We got a lot of statements about global recession, climate change, Iran. What did they actually accomplish? Well, I think they actually accomplished almost nothing. I mean, it's interesting when you think back to a year ago this time during the campaign, this was the same month that, that then-candidate Barack Obama gave his speech in Berlin about uh, the new multilateralism and under his leadership the United States would remake the world, uh, having sort of discarded the unilateralism, the cowboy diplomacy of George W. Bush. Well, now we see, uh, six, seven months in, that perhaps it wasn't the unilateralism or the so-called unilateralism unilateralism <laughs> of George W. Bush, but it was actually American interests and the problems we have with some of our allies. I think in some instances, particularly on Iran, we took a step back because the G8 uh, statement on Iran actually affirms that engagement will continue regardless of the regime's activities. Do you yeah. give such a a bad review to the G8? Yeah, I give a bad review to the G8. I give a pretty bad review to the whole trip, in fact. Uh, to well, his well, whole, just talk to his about whole, the well, G8. Okay, the G8, they, they, they did not do anything on, on climate change, they, which they were going to do. They, they set a, uh, an upper limit for, uh, for temperatures, uh, but no limit on CO2 emissions. And uh, so the, all they did was to pledge more aid to Africa. And it's not really clear when you pledge aid to Africa that it really helps Africa the way foreign aid is distributed. So uh, the president, to his credit, said to Africa, uh, you've got to stop this corruption in order for it to do any good. That was, that was a, uh, a robust statement. But the rest of it was, uh, was basically a lot of nothing. And I don't blame him for being tired of uh, going to these summits. Well, well, let me ask you about that, Charles, because the president did, as you heard in the clip, raise the fact there are an awful lot of summit meetings. And in his short presidency, he's been to a lot of them. Do these still make sense, whether it's the G8 or the G20 or all these other, or is it just a waste of time? Well, it impinges on his golf, so I understand why he's upset with it. <laughs> Look, uh, they were, uh, the, the G7 had a reason. Then we asked the Russians uh, to join in the 90s as a gesture, who don't belong. They are not economic uh, influences or powerhouses in any way. The G7 originally was about economics, and there it made sense. It was a kind of a way to coordinate economic policy. Right now it's useless and having the Russians in, particularly after the invasion of Georgia last year, leaving them in made it into a farce. And the G20 is a larger farce. But Obama compounded it because he is a man who spoke about how he's going to unite the world and has all these woolly internationalist notions. He goes to the summit of the G8. He, ad, he precedes it by trying to ram a cap-and-trade energy tax through the Congress, which he knows is going to hurt the American economy in the name of climate change, in the name of, of demonstrating American leadership. And what does he get at that summit? No support from any of our allies. The Russians explicitly say they're not going to do anything on climate change if it impinges on their economy. And the Chinese and the Indians say that as well, which means that anything he does at home on cap and trade is going to hurt us and do nothing about the emission of uh, the greenhouse gases. Mort, you were anxious to uh, talk not only about Italy, but also preceding that, the couple of days the president spent in Moscow. Right. Uh, it, he said that he was going to reset U.S.-Russian relations, and nothing has nothing has changed. Uh, at the at the very end of this uh, G of the G7 summit, eight G8 summit, Medvedev, the president, went right back to the to the threat to install uh, nuclear-tipped missiles against Poland if we uh, uh, deploy an anti-ballistic missile system uh, in, in, in Poland, which is not directed against the, against the Russians at all. It's directed against, against the Iranians. So, you know, the, the Russians are just as tough 
as they've ever been. They're just as authoritarian. They're just as anxious to uh, to, to inst uh, dominate their their old sphere of influence as they as they ever were. And he got nowhere on Iran. There's no there's no Russian U.S. Um, uh, uh, axis forming against the Iranians. He got he got nowhere on Georgia. They're still menacing. Uh, uh, Russians are still menacing Georgia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we got about a minute left, uh, Steve. The president now is in.